Trusting the weather app in Kenya is like being in a relationship from Nairobi. You'll just end up disappointed and confused. We actually have a higher chance of having a non-corrupt government than having a weather app in Kenya that works. Glad you're watching Amazing Viewer. It's your first time here. Consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're coming back to watch my video, I appreciate your love and support for my content. In today's video, we are in Africa and we'll be looking at this country called Kenya, our famous African country. Yeah, from the internet. Sure. So many people refer to Kenya as the capital of Africa. What is that? And they say South Africa is not part of Africa. How can a country be inside a country be inside a country? So some people believe that Africa is a country. So uh, and Kenya is the capital. So let's find out what are the things that uh, Americans have found intriguing about Kenya. Can we talk about how unpredictable Kenyan weather is? Because if you want to name the most useless app in Kenya, it's the weather app. Tell me why it can be raining outside, pouring rain, thunderstorm, and the weather app, you'll open it and it'll be like, sunny with a bit of clouds. What do you mean? Even it talked about El Nino coming. It's like, it's going to be so bad. It's going to be so bad. Where was it? It came for like two or three days. That was El Nino. Trusting the weather app in Kenya is like being in a relationship from Nairobi. You'll just end up disappointed and confused. We actually have a higher chance of having a non-corrupt government than having a weather app in Kenya that works. Kenyans themselves are the weathermen. Like you have to go outside in your car or just walk into the garden and be like, hmm, yeah, the clouds, it's looking like it's going to rain. And I promise you, you will be more accurate than the damn weather app. I don't know why I have so much beef with the weather app, but I just do. My favorite things about visiting Kenya as an American. First off, probably like my all-time favorite is the food. It's so freaking tasty. The tea, it's a 15 out of 10. You can't, it doesn't compare to anything here in America. There's this thing called chapati and I literally will eat like 15 a day. One year I went home and I think I brought home like 30 of them and I froze them because I was just like, I need these in my life for as long as I can. The beans. They have flavor, they have love, they taste delicious. The bananas, the avocados, I swear the avocados are probably the size of my head and they're like 50 cents at most. Skumawiki, it's like um, collard greens maybe you could say here. It's like shaved collard greens or like shaved kales. So freaking good. The cabbage, so good. Okay, not only the food is amazing, but like their nightlife, I've never seen anything like it. I've traveled all over Europe, I've gone to Australia, I've gone most places in America, and literally nothing compares to their nightlife. It's fun. Everybody dances. It's just a good time. People aren't just standing around doing nothing. I will say though, the one thing I don't like is the traffic and trying to cross streets because it's terrifying. I'm a Norwegian living in Kenya and one of the culture shock I've had here is that you wash your shoes. Okay, I get that it's the red sand, but the shoes are for outdoors. So this is my husband's shoes, they're all clean. I think you need water. Do you need water? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we wash with water. Maybe try with water? Okay. Things I had no clue about as an American before going to Africa. I've been to Kenya five times. I didn't learn this one until my second time there. I was over at my best friend's house and she offered me a banana and I was like, no, thank you. I'm not hungry because I feel here in America, we will offer you food. It's just to be nice. I feel like oftentimes, yeah, yeah, I'm going to eat all your food. They're kind of like... And she looked at me and she said, you don't say no to food here in Africa. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. So I have never rejected food anywhere since then. Somebody offers me food, even if I don't like it, I eat it. Catch me eating that whole plate. Catch me asking for seconds. Second one is kind of on the same note. A person in Kenya will always offer you tea when you come into their house. They were once ruled by the British, and so that's the British tradition, I think, that has stayed. But their tea is bomb. They actually have some of the biggest tea farms and some of the best tea that you'll ever try. Guys, we have made it to downtown Nairobi. It's our first day here in East Africa, and we're embarking on a long 
long Africa trip. It's really hot indeed. We just disembarked the bus. We had a crash on the way, literally, from the airport to here. The bus it collided. Crazy. It was really, really scary. But now we've made it to downtown Nairobi. I am visiting every country on the planet and today I'm in Kenya. I'm currently at the Bomas, which is a cultural village here just outside of Nairobi. And here you can find the traditional houses of the Kenyan people. And that's very, very fascinating. You can see all those different kinds of huts. There's Yannis, my travel companion. <laughs> Several countries along Africa and it's going to be intense. So stay tuned if you want to stay have tuned. some crazy content. Exactly. And if you're from Africa, drop me a message and then maybe we can meet. We're literally going from Kenya all the way down to South Africa. Guys, we've just made it to the Bomas, this cultural village here in Nairobi. And you see there is a little Pumba, a little village bar, and a little, what do you even call them in, in English? Boar. Boar. Little... Things I don't like about Kenya as an American. So this first one, I didn't like it the first time I went, but after going several times and really becoming more accustomed to the culture, it definitely grew on me and now I actually don't mind it at all. But it was eating with my hands. This was always something that was super taboo in my family. You never ate with your hands. And so it was just really hard for me to adjust. But I mean, one of my friends was like, you don't have a choice, just do it. And so once I did it, I was completely fine. And now I really don't mind it at all. I think it's just like, it makes more sense. But yeah, at first I was like, I don't like this. Number two is the traffic. Um, I mean, I could look at it both ways. I don't like it or it's just like the funnest ride of my life and I don't really know what's gonna happen next. So that's how I feel about the traffic. Okay, it's not that I don't like this one, but um, where I live, there's not like roaming goats or cows. And one time I got chased by a goat and I really didn't like that. And the last thing is I don't like how long it takes me to get there from where I live. It takes me about a day and a half like in flight time. I think it's like 45 hours to get there and I don't really like that. I live in Kenya. Of course people are gonna think I'm a tourist. Jumbo! Hakuna Matata! I live in Kenya. Of course I eat in Maswa. I live in Kenya. Of course people are gonna give me all kinds of local names. Njeri! We! Njeri ni nani? Mimi ni shiro! I live in Kenya. Of course I eat mugura. Hi, my name is Roberta. I'm Brazilian and I've been living in Nairobi for the last two years. And let me tell you about some things I've learned and habits I got since I moved to Kenya. The first one is drinking tea. I've never had this habit of drinking tea in Brazil. And now I have lots of different flavors and kinds of teas in my pantry. I'm still not a big fan of chai with milk, but maybe one day I'll like it. Number two, keep your shoes clean. Oh, but I'm Kenyan and I don't keep my shoes clean. Maybe you don't, but the majority of the people here in Nairobi, they do. The style here is really, really red, but most of people's shoes are always going to be clean. And I was very ashamed to realize that mine were not. So now I have this habit of always washing my shoes and keeping them clean, which make them look way better. Third, always have a bag with you. Otherwise, you will have to buy a new one. It's not that cheap. And in the end of the day, you're going to have tens in your house, like I do. But now I've learned and I always keep keep a bag inside of my purse. Tell me in the comments what Cup, I do. A Norwegian trying to learn Kikuyu. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you want to know a super weird question somebody asked me as an American traveling to Kenya? They private DM me and ask me if I ever have to poop in the Kenyan bathrooms in public. I thought this was like a super weird and personal question to ask, but then it reminded me of a story. 
probably my all-time favorite story. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, I've been to Kenya a handful of times and it's one of my favorite countries I've ever been to. But my first time there, one of my little housemates, she was actually, I think from Mexico, and her mom was worried that they weren't gonna feed her in the host family, which was not the case. They fed us a lot of food. So her mom packed her with all of these snacks, all of these things like canned, like bagged tuna, little fiber one bars, things like that. We all were walking to school and Kenyans eat a much smaller breakfast than we were used to. And I think that we just had bread and we wanted a little snack. She had fiber one bars with her. So she gave us each one fiber one bar. Okay, we split ways. We all ate our fiber one bars. And then when they got back to the house, they told us the story how right after one of our friends ate the fiber one bar, he was like, oh my gosh, I have to go to the bathroom right now. And so he runs into a little restaurant and he nobody spoke English. They were all speaking Swahili. Even though English is the official language, most people speak Swahili. They are all speaking Swahili and he was like, I have to use your bathroom. I have to use your bathroom. Finally, they let him use his bathroom, but there was no toilet paper in the bathroom. And so he runs out to this man who's holding a newspaper. He grabs the newspaper from him and he ends up having to do his business in um, a toilet. It was actually like a hole in the ground because that's how a lot of their toilets actually are. Um, and he got back home and I think to this day he probably swears that it was that fiber one bar but I don't really think that they work that fast so if you have any info on fiber one bars let me know things I didn't know about Africa before going as an American and I've only been to Kenya and Tanzania so that's only really what I'm speaking on and don't judge me um, I feel like there's a huge lack of information lack of education lack of everything about Africa in general for us Americans the first one always gets me whenever I get back. People always ask me, was there just lions roaming around? The answer is no. There's not lions roaming around. I've seen lions, but on safari. The second thing I had no clue about is they have like big, big cities, just like we have, with like skyscrapers and basically everything that a city has. The third thing is how amazing their education is. A lot of the kids know three or four languages by the time they're in fifth grade. When I was in fifth grade, I knew one, and I barely knew one. And there's so many more. I could keep going, but I have found such a huge love for Kenya. I've been back five or six times now. We can go on and on. There's a lot to say about this. But if you want to hear my experience in Kenya as a foreigner, so the video is linked in the comment section for you. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment, leave your thought kindly. And in Kenya, they say, Akuno Matata, Karibu Sana Kenya, welcome to Kenya. Uh, until we meet again, goodbye.